Hey Freaks, so I wanted to do an update video on the Garmin Edge 820 and just say how I've got on with it, what I've found, any good things, any problems. It's got to go back in a couple of days to Sigma Sport. So thank you again to them for sending this out. It's been an awesome three weeks with it. And I'm sorry to see it go. I'd love to keep it. But yeah, what have we found? So I previously spoke about the mount and I think we should probably start with the bad stuff. So the mount, I really really don't like. I don't understand the whole point of having it sit up not in line with the stem. They didn't do it on the 810 and I don't know why they've chosen to do it with the 820. It might have something to do with the buttons if you had a mount flush with the stem. Maybe you wouldn't be able to press them so that may have something to do with it. The other thing I chose not to enable for the time I've had the 820 is the instant reporting feature. Um, it seems to be causing too many problems rather than solving them um, so I've left it off. Another thing I mentioned previously was the touchscreen um, and how I thought it should probably be a little bit more responsive or a bit quicker and it was brought to my attention by a friend that it can't be like a smartphone display because if it was you'd be forever skipping past the things you needed um, and it wouldn't work with gloves on which were two kind of observations I guess that I hadn't really thought about but I wanted to show you anyway so what you can see is when scrolling down the list it, it it's kind of behind whereas compared to a smartphone and this is obviously the data screen for when you're riding so what I was talking about in terms of the sensitivity of the screen here is this sometimes when you want to swipe across it's perfect and other times it does a tap I think what it requires though is just a much firmer press and that's just really down to the type of touch screen it is. Realistically though I don't think the touch screen is going to cause anybody any issues whatsoever. I think when you're out on your bike and you're just using one or two different data screens you're not scrolling down big lists and you're not changing loads of settings. You're swiping between pages and really it's fine for that. So that's one negative and one thing that I wasn't quite sure about and now all that remains is good stuff so Let's crack on with that. In terms of its size, the form factor, this is identical to the 520, but it's packing so much more than the 520. Effectively, the Edge 820 is packing everything that the Edge 1000 has, apart from a smaller display, the inability to turn it into a landscape device, and I think the only other thing is not having a micro SD card slot because this has got 16 gig of memory built in. Speaking of built-in, it's got full detailed mapping and routing built straight into the device. So you have only got 16 gigabytes of storage and I think you are left with around 6 gigabytes once the mapping is installed. The downside is there is no expandable storage, but having fully detailed maps on board, that's, that's awesome. And I've actually used that a few times. So on two or three of my rides, I've used the auto route feature. So you can go into the settings and select create a route and how far you want to go. You can make it avoid hills or avoid main roads. You can set it for a time or, and it basically just plots a route for you. All you have to do is hit go and then it navigates the route. And that's one of my favorite features. I think that was also on the Edge 1000 as well. It might have even been on the 810. So that might not be a new thing for some people but I love that. One thing that I love about the Edge A20 is the battery saver mode, and I think that is a new feature for the Edge A20. So basically what it does, it just turns off the display, but it still records your ride and all of the sensor data in the background. And it actually saves you about 50% battery life. So if you're really low on the way home from a ride and you turn on battery saver, you're gonna get home and still have your ride data, whereas before it would have cut off and finished your ride exactly where it cut off. So that feature is really good. And in fact, you could run Battery Saver for the entire time if you weren't bothered about seeing the screen and effectively you're likely to get twice as good battery life. But for the people out there who don't already have a cycling computer and they're looking to get one, I think the previous model, the 810, was £479 if you were to get the bundle with the cadence speed sensors. And this year's is £379. 300? Let me just check that price. £389 which is £90 less than the previous version and that's quite significant. If you get the model on its own, if you've already got the sensors, it's £329. 
So I think that's a much more uh, reasonable price that Garmin have put on this device and it makes it a much more affordable upgrade. It's still a hell of a lot of money, but it's much more affordable. When I first got the 820, I was going to say that I didn't think it was a worthwhile upgrade if you already had the 810. But I think I've revised my opinion on that because of the battery saver, because of the built-in mapping, because of the updated form factor. And having seen the price point of it, and now knowing that it's 329 rather than 429, I think it makes it a viable upgrade um, if you're looking for those features. Thanks very much to my friend Jeff, and of course the guys at Sigma Sport for sending out the A20. Uh, it's been a pleasure reviewing it, and it's a real shame to have to send it back and to put on these horrible old sensors again but uh, yeah thanks to those guys there's a link to their site check them out if you haven't already I think they've got a comparable price on the 820 as everybody else and that's really the end of the review of the Garmin Edge 820 <laughs>